can you use be frugal? Right? And it's easy to use. Just put it in the book, set it for free, then start stopping. Well, I thought that I would make like a little quick, um, a little quick response video, um, to the Storm Monroe interview and Cindy. Um, I didn't really look at the whole thing because I'm, I'm, I pretty much know what Cindy is pretty much about. Um, but I'm subscribed to Storm uh, Monroe channel. I'm not really subscribed to Cindy channel. Um, Sidji is good for entertainment when it comes to um dragging black men and stuff like that, but um I believe that Sidji is doing something different than black women that are in the divestment community. So um like she's good for entertainment, like she's a com you know, she does comedy basically and she drags black males and that's all good and that's all entertaining. But um, it was good to see Storm Monroe interview her. Um, I wouldn't have known about the interview if I wasn't subscribed to Storm Monroe. And um, I subscribed to him after um, I subscribed to basically Tasha K. Um, so I look at him sometimes and Tasha K uh, for celebrity gossip, basically. Um, so I saw that he had an interview with Sid G. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing because I pretty much know uh, a lot about Sid G. I remember when Sid G started make started making videos, and she was against white people. Okay, she would call white people out the name. Um, she had like all kind of disgusting terms um, for white people. She came across like she was really racist, uh, which I believe in somewhat she still is. Uh, but I don't think she's as racist as you know, it appears to be because her family members are with non-black people. Her sisters have children with white men and non-black men. I believe white men. So her sisters got biracial children. Her brother got biracial children. Um, in the past, she's used white men for the bag, you know, for the wallet. She said she's never been with the white man but she will use them for money. I don't know if I really believe that. Um, I don't really believe that because of dating white men and just knowing men, period. Uh, yeah, you don't have to sleep with the man to get his money, uh, but for a man to continue to support you and help you with your bills, um, I think that you were giving those white men a little bit more than conversation. Uh, but Sid G said she's never been with the white guy and, you know, different things like that, which I really don't believe. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I heard throughout the interview. And it was a pretty good interview. I did not watch the whole thing um, because I pretty much know who Sid G is, basically. You know, I know her history on YouTube. I've been around that long. I just haven't been making videos. Um, I remember when Sid G was against black women who were um, dating non-black men. Um, I remember when Sid G would call these black women out their names. I have heard Sid G call black women um, who date white men bed witches. I've heard this come out of her mouth. Um, and it was a good thing that she talked on the whole situation with Tariq Nasheed because she used to worship Tariq Nasheed. She was one of Tariq Nasheed fangirls. Um, he, she would be in his chat. I believe she's donated to him before. Um, she would always be back there, like cheerleading for Tariq Nasheed, uh, always trying to, you know, support him and things like that. And then um, something happened between them. I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was a young lady that used to uh, be on Tariq Nasheed radio show. Is it called Ism Radio? I think that's the name of it. And it was a young lady that was on that radio show, and she was cool with Sid G also. So um, Tariq Nasheed and that young lady had a falling out because Tariq Nasheed was pretty much making it seem like the young lady wanted to be with him, or and he was married, and he's married to Peanut, and something about she smoked weed, or it was something like that. He felt like she was going behind his back talking about him or something like that, doing dirty things to him. And Sid G was really cool with this young lady. I cannot remember her name. 
because it was, you know, years ago. It was probably like three, three to four years ago when this situation happened, at least three. Yeah. And um, something happened and Sid G gave the young lady an interview on her platform on YouTube. She gave the lady an opportunity, the young, it was a black girl, gave the black girl an opportunity to basically said, you know, what happened between her and Tariq Nasheed and basically, you know, allowed the woman to clear her name because at the time Tariq Nasheed was attacking her and everybody was turning on this girl. And this girl would be on the radio show with Tariq Nasheed. She was cool with Tariq Nasheed, just like Sid G. Sid G would kiss Tariq Nasheed's ass, okay? She said a lot of disgusting racist comments right along with Tariq Nasheed. She would go after black women that dated interracial. Um, that's why her and, um, and I hate to mention her name, but I'm going to call her PP, the so-called the queen of swirling, who coined the word swirling, um, that lady. So, you know, her and uh, the queen of swirl used to get into it also, and it was because of Tariq Nasheed. It was because Cynthia G supported Tariq Nasheed. She did not give a damn about all black women. She supported mammies, just like she still support mammies. Um, she supported black males, just like she still support black males. And um, that's why she would get into it with Pink Pill back in the day. And, you know, Sid G did used to say things about natural hair. Um, I believe she called natural hair slave hair. And I heard this out my own mouth. I mean, I heard this out. I heard this with my own ears. That she said that natural hair on black women is like slave hair. She said this, Sid G. This isn't a lie. You know, she can deny it all she wants to. Um, but she said it because she was mad at that so-called queen of swirl, pink pill. She was mad at her. And she was mad at the women that supported her because we were against mammies. Okay? The, the women in the divestment community and the interracial dating community for black women, they coined that word mammy. We started calling black women that wanted to attack other black women for opening up our options, we used to call them mammy. We still call them mammy. We understand the definition of mammy, but the, re the, the race has switched. You know, now it's the black male who's oppressing you. Now the black male is like your slave, your slave master. So a lot of these black women, they are carrying on like a mammy for the black male. Okay, they're ready to go out there and pick cottons for the black male. They're ready to go out there, be on the battlefield, protest for the black male. They want to do everything for them. So that's why we call black women who worships black men, black women who doesn't even care about their own self or their womanhood, they choose black men. So we call them mammies. And so Sid G., um, I heard her said it a couple times would call black women who dated non-black men bet with you. She would be making the videos while Tariq was making the videos. She would be going off just like Tariq would be going off and she would be saying some of the most disgusting things about black women that did not want black males like she does. Because she wants black men and I believe the reason why she wants black men because she understands black men is all that she can get. Um, I don't believe that Sid G is capable of getting a white man or a non-black man of any type of value, like high value. And I don't even like to use that word, like high quality, high earning. She knows that a lot of non-black men would not think that she's like really attractive like that. Not saying that she's an ugly person, but I don't believe that they would really be going for her like that. But she knows that black men are conquered and she knows that as long as she has a place to stay, she has some type of income that black men would, you know, she could get with the black male because a lot of black males don't have standards. They would get with her just like how Robert Perkins got with her. She knows that black men don't really got no standards. They would get, you know, any type of black woman. A lot of them do get with, you know, like how they go on and on and say that they don't like black women that are overweight. But most of the black women that are with black men are overweight. 
Okay, so black women understand that black men have no standards, that they will take anything. So a lot of black women get it that they can't move around because they don't have self-esteem like that. Um, or they don't feel they don't got standards, so they won't move around to other races of men because they know they got to put in some effort to get these men. You don't have to put in any type of effort to get the black male. You just need a job and you need a car and you need a house. It's easy because black men want you to take care of them. All right. So it didn't surprise me when Sid G got with Robert Perkins, you know, when she flew out to meet Robert Perkins, to deal with Robert Perkins. It did not surprise me, you know, but what gets me, you would think that she would go after somebody with a little bit more standards since she said that black men are so attractive and black men are so awesome in the bedroom. She's willing to sleep with a group of conquered men like Robert Perkins, who has five, six you know, baby mamas, she still will make time to catch a flight to go screw him, you know, and I believe it happened because she never really denied it, okay? She was dealing with him. She used to like Willie D too, but Willie D probably wasn't checking for her, so she went for Robert Perkins, but I remember she used to do, you know, pretty much flirt and talk about Willie D on her channel, and oh, Willie D looks so good. No, he doesn't, okay? No, he doesn't. You just understand that black men don't have no standards. A lot of black men lack self-esteem, so they'll get with a black woman that looks like you. You know, they'll get with a black woman, you know, that, you know, looks like Sid G. So that's why she stays with black men. She understands that their standards are very low. And so a lot of black women, they don't have that confidence about themselves to step out of the box to date other ra races of men because they feel that they're going to be rejected because a lot of these black women, they fit what black men like. Okay? They act and dress and do things what black men prefer. Okay? And that's basically what she did. Now, she was on there explaining the whole situation with Tariq Nasheed and to me, Tariq Nasheed is just a panderer. He just goes around and jumps on different topics so he can get money from the black community. And black women, they support Tariq Nasheed. And a lot of black males, a lot of so-called ADOS, FBA, whatever they call it, um, they like Tariq Nasheed. Because Tariq Nasheed, he's with the biracial woman. His mother-in-law is a white woman. But Tariq Nasheed will get on line. And I believe that Tariq Nasheed's sister is married to a white man or a white Hispanic man. But he'll get online and he'll call black women bad wenches and he'll talk about divestors. Now all of them want to gang up on divestors and use divestors for, you know, clickbait. A lot of these black men on YouTube are just going around stealing these girls' videos and putting them up on their channels and talking about these girls and different things like that. That's why on YouTube, um, it's probably best to not, don't do videos. You know, if you're not going to use YouTube as a career, you don't have to put your face all over no YouTube, getting on no videos, talking on no camera. Because when you're talking about divestment and you're talking about interracial dating, these black men will go try to dox you. They will go steal your videos off of your channel, put it on their channel. They'll go around stealing your pictures. Like some of these people just don't, they just don't understand. They, they don't understand boundaries. They will literally take your things and put them up on your channel like it belongs to them. Like it belongs to them. You know what I'm saying? They just don't have any type of respect for black women that do not want to deal with black men. So you will have black men and then you will have mammies stealing your photos, trying to dox you, trying to dox you through your social media accounts, putting your videos on their channel and different things like that. So if you're going to talk about like interracial dating and divestment, it's best to stay off the camera. If you're in a relationship with a non-black man, you don't have to prove anything to people on YouTube. I know that people say, well, I want people to understand that I'm really living that life that I talk about when I talk about divestment and opening up your options and being with other races of men besides black men. I get it. But a lot of these women on YouTube are mammies. You got to understand that. Out of this whole black sector, 
coming from like the divestment, the, the interracial so-called swirl, um, level up, that fem femininity content. Out of all of these people, it's probably 10% 10, 10 of these women are truly divested. Okay, most of these black women that are on YouTube in your comment section are really mammies, disgruntled mammies. You know, they just, it's, I believe that Sid G is a disgruntled mammy. Um, just like I believe Nyla says, and um, I like Paris Milan somewhat, but I believe she's a disgruntled mammy also. Any woman that will get online, talk all this trash about black men, say that black men are conquered, that they're weak, and all these different things about black men, they don't got no money, they don't take care of their children. You get online and you say all of these things about how they're dusty, they're conquered, uh, nobody should really want them, they don't take care of the children, and they're bummy, and all type of things, and they leech off of women and live up in women's house, and you know, have raw sex with these black women and create all these children out of well up with them destroying the black community, they'll say all of these things. You know, Sidji and her camp and all of them will say all of these things, but then at the end of the day, they will turn right around and sleep with the black male. Their message is not adding up. It's like being a hypocrite. Contradiction. It's not adding up. It's not adding up. And any woman that is truly about divestment and walking away from the black community and the black male and the black male son who does not give a damn about these mammies just because they're black women, these mammies have a mindset like the black male. They're savage, okay? A lot of times these mammies are racist. They do not like black women that's in the divestment community. They do not like black women that date interracial. They want everybody to put their no good ass black male sons on a pedestal. They want everybody to believe that the black male is so-called strong and he's so attractive when it comes to other races of men and that's just not the case. You understand that other races of men are gonna look for different qualities and you're gonna have to um, work on those different things. I'm not saying that it takes a lot to get a non-black man, but if it's a non-black man with some money, an attractive non-black man, we're not talking about a bottom shelf uh, Brad or Wigger or anything like that. Women like Sid G could not compete, okay? She just can't. She can probably get with, with like a bottom shelf Brad, just like she got with a bottom shelf nigga like, you know, Robert Perkins. I mean, this man has five, six baby mamas already. Like, who cannot get with Robert Perkins? Who cannot get with him? Like, so you're setting bad examples for these women, but you're using divestment talking points. But then, you know, like Sid G and the women in her camp, they'll go back over there to their channel and they'll say, people are stealing their talking points. No, what, what's going on is a lot of these girls are new to the space. So they don't know the backstory of where they came from. Um, Sid G and her B1 scammer crew. Um, because I believe those two, that couple are scammers, okay? And I know for sure that couples don't care nothing about black women who date interracial. Even though the so-called wife of the, that couple was married to a white man, allegedly. That's what they got going on in these YouTube streets because you know, they've had friendships with people, they've spilled the tea, they've docked some of their subscribers and different things like that, and people have come online and exposed them. Now, I don't really have a personal problem with Sidji and the people that bees on her channel, especially that couple, but my problem with Sidji is that she will use all of these talking points. She would use all these divestment talking points, like aborting black male children. That didn't come from Sidji. See, and she'll sit around and act like she coined that and she came up with that. No, you stole that from a woman that's about divestment. Okay, you stole that, and I don't even like to bring their name up like that, but the truth is the truth. That came from Kendall St. Charles. We had already discussed that years ago because I used to follow Kendall St. Charles when she had her channel on YouTube. And that was said years ago. But Sid G is trying to repackage it like she came up with it. Like her and Nyla are listening to these videos because if they tell you they don't listen, they do. I've heard people do videos 
and say certain things in their videos, and the next day you will hear Sid G say it. I've said things in some of my videos, and you will hear them repeat the things that you say. So they do know who you are in the divestment community. When they say they do not listen to your videos, they're lying. They're over here in the divestment camp spying them and their mammies and the black men that they worship. The black men that they worship over here spying and their followers are over here spying. Okay, so nobody is stealing your talking points. Those talking points came from divested black women. Mammy, I hear that a lot of y'all over there now from the B1, now y'all using the word man. Y'all didn't even like the word man. I remember even Nyla said that when she had that problem with the McClure twins family, you know, it's a uh, family on YouTube and social media with a black woman, and I believe she's from Nigeria, but um, she moved to New Jersey or New York or something like that. So she met the white man. They got the married. She had already had two two little girls, um, twins, two biracial little girls for another white man, but that didn't work out. Then she met that white guy that she's married to right now, and then they married each other. Now they're a family. They're doing pretty good for themselves. But I remember when Nyla Sands came on YouTube, she attacked that interracial family. The McClure family, she attacked those people like she was crazy. Okay? I remember when she was online telling everybody she was married to some man in the military. This is before they exposed her. Before Cluster B exposed her. She was online attacking children and their mother and their father bashing the McClure family. She hated interracial couples. She was attacking black women that dated non-black men, calling them out their names just like Sid G did in the past also while claiming to be married to a black man that was somewhat high value, high earning, that was in the military and come to find out her husband, her pretend husband, because she's not married to him, as far as we know. Her pretend husband, her pretend husband is not no guy from the military. He's actually somebody with a criminal record, numerous baby mamas that disrespect black women, that called them out their names. This is who she really was married to, but she was on YouTube going after the McClure family, building a YouTube channel off the backs of those people. She should be ashamed of herself. Them people is living way better than you could ever live, Nyla. They're living better and they're taking their care of their children way better than your pretend husband could ever do for you. And I don't think you've ever apologized for what you did to that family, how you was attacking those little girls and their mother and all type of things, calling that white man all types of things. You started your YouTube career off of attacking that family. You should be ashamed of yourself. But now they, you know, now the women in that camp, they said they're not mammies anymore. They're not worshiping black men anymore because black men attacked them and which black men did. Black men attacked them, uh, attempted to dox them. Some of them doxed them. So I guess they got tired of, you know, uh, putting black males on a pedestal, kissing their ass and worshiping black males while talking about non-black people being racist and calling the white man all out of his name and talking about white women because some of these women are obsessed with white women. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of white women like that but if you're going to date interracial you must understand you're going to have to deal with white women because if you date white men you got to understand that their sisters are going to be white. Their mothers are going to be white. Their grandmothers are going to be white. I understand that on a collective, white people, I mean, yeah, well, white people were white women that they really don't care for black women like that. They're not going out there and, you know, um, fighting fighting for black women when we're being um, taken out by black males and while we're being dragged all over social media and have to deal with, you know, people attacking us because we're black. You know, I understand that white women don't come out in a big force to stand up for black women like white women want us 
to stand up for them. I get it. I understand why some black women have an issue with white women. I get it. Especially the mammy, the pro-black mammy. All about a black man, all about creating black children. I get why she has the problem. But what I don't get is black women who are with white men or non-black men or in relationships dating non-black men and stuff like that or who want to swirl or date non-black men. Why would you have such a hate against white women? You got to understand that you're going to be dating the white man, the white woman's son. You know, so you're going to have to deal with her. If you're trying to be in a committed relationship with this non-black man, you're going to have to deal with the women of his race. Okay, you just got to, you know, you just got to, you know, that's something that's going to come come with it. So that's something for you to think about. Also, you know, coming online and showing off your interracial um, marriages and stuff. I understand that people build YouTube channels around that. They do vlogs and they feature, you know, their marriage and their, their biracial children. I see a lot of black women and non-black men on YouTube, especially black women with white men. Um, I follow a lot of these interracial couple families. And I understand what they're doing. They, they, they're showcasing their family, talking about what's going on in their family, blogging, and, you know, they're getting money off of YouTube. But women that are talking about divestment or calling out um, black men or calling out the black community, talking about mammies and things like that, it would be best if you keep your non-black man off of your YouTube, off of your social media. Especially if you got a non-black man um, that makes good money, that has a lot going on in his life, um, who's not all about social media and things like that. You know, you don't have to put your man on your social media to prove a point. Because a lot of these people will go back and take those pictures, take those videos. And if they know where you're from, they will go around trying to figure out who these people is. So they can dox you and dox your spouse. Don't put your spouse in any type of danger to try to prove a point to black women or black men on YouTube, people that you don't even know. This is just some advice. That's why I see a lot of black women and non-black men um, who come on social media. Sometimes it doesn't work out and it, it's, it's nasty. So it's best if you just leave your relationship out of social media, out of YouTube, if you're going to be on here talking about the dysfunction of the black community and the black male. Because I've seen these people do it. Black women will do it too. They will dox your family members. They will dox you. And they will put your life and your livelihood in danger. Because they don't agree with you. There's divesting black women that will do the same. I've seen them do it. I've been around in this space probably ever since like 2016, 17. So I would make comments on channels. But I just recently started making videos. And, and let me tell you something. When you start making videos, you will believe that some of these people are on your team when they're really not. They just like to laugh at what you're talking about. They don't really want to support you. They, you know, they don't want to cash that. They don't want to subscribe. They don't want to view your stuff. And you're steady doing this for these people when these people don't really care for you like that. So don't put your life on the line for strangers. That's just what I'm saying. Don't put your spouse business out there, images of your spouse, just to prove a point to black men or whatnot. That's why I don't do it. Uh, I got things going on. I got an actual job. Okay? A real good job. And so I really cannot be on here doing these type of things, especially when I'm talking about the black male. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you know I might put up like you know, my photo in the avatar, but I'm not getting no camera. I'm not giving nobody a video that they can show me in the video doing nothing or whatnot because they will dox you and mammies will dox you and some of these fake divestors will do it too. Um, They will say, oh, I'm all about black women, but when you say something they don't like, they will get the dox to you through your cash app. Um, I don't think you can dox through the cash app, but I know that they can dox you through Super Chat. Y'all don't understand. People can dox you through Super Chat. When you donate, the information that's on your debit card, credit card, they have that information. And so they would just have to refund you your money to get your information through Super Chat. They can dox you through PayPal. Okay? Um, honestly, I believe they can dox you through Patreon. 
because when I did have Patreon, I was able to see everybody's email. I was able to see a lot of information on the people that was that bought membership to Patreon. And I don't think you guys understand that. If somebody's able to get your email, they're going to be able to dox you. So when you come on social media, always use a dummy email. Connect that dummy email to your YouTube channel. Um, don't use that email for anything else but YouTube because I've seen people can dox you through Super Chat, PayPal, um, different things they can dox you through. Um, people can report your cash app, get your cash app all messed up. That's another reason why I do not drop my cash app. I use my cash app for other things. Um, I already get a lot of money on my cash app, so I do not put it on YouTube because I do not want nobody messing my stuff up. I don't want nobody doing anything where they think that they can dock. They can go and get whatever they need to get up off of social media, but we're talking about real life dock. Somebody's real name, somebody's real location, where somebody working at. It's dangerous out here. So you got to be careful in these YouTube streets because these black men and these mammies, they will line you up, okay? They will line you up to try to destroy your life. You don't have a proof or point to nobody. There's plenty of people on YouTube that do not get on the camera that don't, hasn't even shown their face. And they get views and everything like that. Okay? So I would encourage black women, if you're going to talk about these different topics, to not get on the camera. Do not put your spouse on the camera to prove a point. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, you can go around it to show people that you're really about that life. But I'm just telling you, don't do it. Don't give them too much information about your relationship, your whereabouts, or where you work. That's all I'm saying. Because they will dox you. Um, what else? Um, about that Sid G and Storm Monroe um interview. Um, yeah, I saw that Sid G went on her her whole spiel about how the black male is so attractive. Um, that the black male is so strong when he's on his thing and he looks better than white men and he smells better than white men. No, he doesn't. The reason why you're saying that because you know pretty much all you can get is a black male, like a Robert Perkins. You know it. You know it and we know it. That's why you like them. Okay? Um, but to say that they're so attractive and they smell good, to me that's another thing you're trying to say, that white men don't smell good. Girl, black men are dusty, crusty, and ugly. A lot of them do not smell good, and Robert Perkins is not all that. Robert Perkins don't got no standards. You know that already. Got three, we got four or five baby mamas, uh, four or five kids, or something like that. And you already know he ain't got no standards. So that's about as best as you could get. An old country boy, and I think Robert Perkins is from the Carolinas. So that's probably why Sid G is in the Southeast now, because she's either running behind Robert Perkins or got something going on with him. Because you moved from Seattle. So all the way to the south. And I believe Robert Perkins is from the south. I'm not sure exactly where he's from, but I'm pretty sure he's from the southeast. So, you know, now that she's in the southeast, you know, maybe I don't know what's going on with that. That's none of my business. But I just, you know, when she said she moved to the south, I was thinking, wow, you came from all the way over there to here. And Robert Perkins is somewhere in the southeast. Y'all got something going on. <laughs> but I guess so. But when she does that type of thing, you got to pay attention to her. She wants you to continue to worship black men. She's worshiping black men saying, oh, black men are powerful. They can be strong and all this type of shit. Girl, a lot of black men are not in shape. A lot of black men are not attractive. And the black men that we see that y'all get with is not cute at all. Especially Especially now to say it's husband. That's not like no attractive, attractive black male. That's not. I would give you, you know, somewhat some type of kudos if you're talking about a black male that's somewhat handsome. But from the black men that we see y'all get with, nah, them black men that y'all got ain't handsome. Them black men are three trash bags, like you say. They dusty, crusty, ugly, including Cuba. Including Q Butter. That's another thing that I have a problem with CG about. That she's a whole contradiction. She's a hypocrite. Because she's telling you not to birth black males, not to not to do anything for black males, and um don't give them children. 
abort black male sons and black men are conquered and they don't do anything on their own and they just use black women to come up off of black women. Like she said, a lot of these black men like to use her name for the come up. You know, she likes to say a lot. Black men like to put her name in the title for the come up. Well, you are a YouTuber. You know, YouTuber, yeah, being a YouTuber is your full-time job. You don't got a job outside of YouTube because you know it would be really hard for you to do to get a job after you said all those things about white people. You know, they still got your videos and things like that. And you said that out your own mouth before you started talking about black men that talking about white people has put you in a bad position where you won't be able to get a regular job that you would have to stick with YouTube. So that's why you crank all of these videos out, you and Isla, because you depend on YouTube for income. You two don't got no job. You don't got men who got no job. So, um, you know what I'm saying? So YouTube is a full-time job for some of you. And some of you really believe that you're some type of star, like a YouTube star. And that's just not the case. If you're not cranking out and getting like uh, 200, 300, 400,000 views every video, you're not really big like that. <laughs> you're not really big. If you're just getting a couple thousands of video, yeah, you're known in the black sector, but you're not really known in YouTube. And you're definitely not known if you go outside, unless somebody recognizes you from your videos. Nobody don't know who the hell y'all is, and nobody cares. So I believe that a lot of these people get a big ego from their views that they get sucked into YouTube that they don't know when to back away from it. Okay, some of them, they do too much for YouTube. Every day they're making videos. They don't even take a break on Sunday. <laughs> some of these people don't even take a break for making videos. Like, what? Y'all don't get tired? Y'all don't got like a regular life that y'all can focus on? I couldn't do it. I couldn't crank out these videos like some of these people do. No, no, I just couldn't do it. Take all that time with that editing and stuff. You do that when you depend on YouTube for your your when you depend on YouTube for your livelihood. You will be doing things like that. Uh I just don't got the time. I don't got the time to be doing it. So I just get on here and talk. Plus, I'm not no YouTuber. That's why I like to stay in my little corner. I don't want to be caught up in their beef. I don't want to be caught up in nothing going on in the black community. I'm just giving my commentary. Now, some of the things that Sid G said is very funny. When she drags black men, it's very entertaining. She knows how to edit her videos really good and put it together really good. But Sid G is just all talk, no action. She's just talking. She's just, you know, getting you women excited, allowing you women to, you know, express your feelings when it comes to dragging the black male and talking about them. But at the end of the day, she's telling you the black male is the most attractive male and he's powerful when you look at him and you know, white men is, is this and that. Now, baby, white men are attractive too. They may not be your cup of the tea because you know you're not their cup of tea. You understand that, okay? You get it. And so you may feel that they're not attractive, but there's a lot of black women, especially um, a lot of the divestment black women. I'm not saying all, because some of black women in the divestment community do not date men at all, okay? They don't want no man. They don't care if it's black, white, Hispanic. And a lot of the divestors are into dating non-black men. We understand that non-black men are not your type. We get it. But when you get up here and try to put black men on a pedestal and try to say that black men are so fine and black men smell good and they're the strongest, you're a liar. Black men are not strong. That's why they're conquered. See the contradiction of her message. But see, the mammy is not going to catch it. Because the disgruntled mammy, she likes to get online. She likes to get in these spaces and talk about her baby daddy, talk about black men who did her wrong, talk about the father that wasn't in her life. A lot of these mammies have these issues with black men, with their black men's sons um, out of control in their household. And they dealing with these black male sons and these black male sons want to buck up at them, want to fight their mothers, disagree with them being really rebellious and different things like that. They want to come online. They want a space where they can just talk about the black male. They want to get them. They want to get them. But a lot of this is about getting the black male's attention. When it comes to women like Sidji, Nala says, um, black woman's fair. When it comes to those type of women, those so-called 
um, not no, they have grown and they're not mammies, but they still get in the bed and lay down with black males. And most of the black males they get in the bed with is not even attractive. These black men are not even the high earning black men that these women are getting with. They're the average pookie and ray ray dusty trash can bandit bum, like you say, Cindy. So you're telling black women that they're conquered, they're weak. And here, get, here you get up on Stone Marrow and say, no, black men can be powerful, they can be strong. Please let me know what time in history was the black man strong and powerful. Please let me know. Because from what I know, most of the time the black man was conquered. He was somebody's slave, somebody's bitch. So when did you see the black male be strong and powerful? Okay. No, the black male is not strong and powerful at all. He's weak. And if you really would look at most black men, they're not attractive. So I know you're crazy. You might need to get glasses put on, and then you got the nerve to say they don't they don't smell, they smell good. Girl, black men, some black men are disgusting. They don't keep their ass clean. A lot of them are bums, ashy and dusty. Do not cut their hair. They're not clean cut. They got criminal records. They got numerous baby mamas sleeping with all these women, raw dogs and them, just nasty. But then you get up here and talk about all the black male this and the black male that. The black male has always been conquered. He's never done anything on the behalf of black women. Even when it came to the Black Panther Party. During the Black Panther Party, black men still disrespected black women. They were going around raping um, non-black women, you know, our worded non-black women. Um, they were going around um, assaulting, sexually assaulting black women. They were going around doing all of this during the Black Panther movement. They wanted integration because they wanted to get with white women and they wanted to be accepted by the white community, i.e. white men. They didn't want integration to free the black community or to be with black women and make life better for black women. That is not what Martin Luther King and the rest of these niggas was trying to do. They was trying to sleep with white women. Just like Martin Luther King was married to Coretta Scott, but was sleeping with white women that he had to pay to, you know, give a bag to for them to deal with him. He was caught in hotels with white women while he was married to Coretta. So Martin Luther King wanted to integrate because he wanted to be like white men. See, black men want to be like white men. So I don't understand how said you can say they're powerful or not. No, they're not powerful. They're weak. You said it out your own mouth. They conquer. So what power do you see in that? See, that's the contradiction. If you're not if you're not smart enough and you're not a true divester, you won't catch that stuff that Nyla and her said. They are still using mammy terminology. They're still mammy. Okay, they're just talking about the black male, getting black women up, upset, getting them excited by dragging the black male, but since you don't really got no solution. No solution where she will still lay down with the black male. You cannot say all these things about a group of men and then turn around and say they're so attractive, they can be powerful, and uh, they're the best in the bedroom. No, babe. We know they're the best in the bedroom because they don't got no standards. They just go around and have sex with all different types of black women. They don't care what type of black woman is. They ain't care if she's skinny, overweight, bald-headed, got hair on her head, wear weave, natural. They do not care. They will put their penises in anything. Black men will screw anything, point blank, period. So a lot of times these women get with black men because they know black men don't got no self-esteem, they don't got no standards. That's a lot of reason why the non-black women, the non-black women that are rejected by the men in their community get with black men is because they know that black men are low self-esteem, they have no standards, and black men will screw anything. They will put their penis in anything, point blank, period. You could be three, 400 pounds and the black man will still figure out a way to put his penis in you. Point blank, period. That's why he's out here trying to assault children and little girls, two-year-olds and five-year-olds or six-year-olds doing these things to little girls because the black male has no standards, okay? He's not classy. He's a savage. He's a beast. 
There's nothing handsome and attractive about that. You can drive down the street and see all of these black men, and you tell me if they're attractive, if they clean cut, if they got it going on. Nah, most of these black men are ugly. So we know you lying. But what you might think is handsome, the rest of us might think is ugly. So I get it. 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 But the interview was a good interview, but I just don't like that the contradiction and what's going on, it's going to lead a lot of younger black women astray. Um, a lot of younger black women are going to come on here. They're going to put Sidney on a pedestal because she's dragging black men. She's talking about their baby daddies. Most of the women that follow Sidney are men. Okay? The disgruntled man is just like Sidney and now the same. They're mammies. They have children by black males. They sleep with black males. They got black male sons in their household. Okay? But they get online and they talk about black men all day so they can rank in the coin. So, so they can get the clicks and they can get the views. But you can't say the black man is this and the black man is that. And, you know, he can't. The white man is not jealous of him. He's definitely not. It, why would he be jealous of a group of conquered men? A lot of people think that a lot of you black women are dumb, which you are. I believe that now black people believe that black women are very dumb. Because black women stick around, they support, they put black males all over a pedestal. They keep creating these children out of wedlock with black men, children in wedlock with black men, creating all these black male savages, black male apes. That's basically what they're doing, creating the problem. And then they want to birth the problem. Then they want to get online and complain about the black male all the time. Honestly, I don't really care for the man. I got a big problem with the black woman who births the black male. I don't want to talk to her. I don't really want her to come around. Um, she's part of the problem. Problem the problem. So for divesting women, if you think that you're going to be able to get all black women on a core and you think that you need to bring those mammies to your side, leave the mammies where they at. Because most of those mammies are the single mothers. Most of those mammies got the black male's children. Most of those mammies have been pumped and dumped abused and abused and brutalized by the black male. And a lot of the mammy's mindset is just as savage as their nigga son. So trying to bring every black woman to that investment is just not going to happen. You need to let them stay where they're at because they're confusing the talking point. See, they get to say all these things about black men and then lay down with them at the end. So that's pretty much what they're showing other young black women to do. Okay, get online and talk about your baby daddy because he left you because you had sex with him raw. You did protect your body. You didn't know how to put protection on because some of these black women need to stop lying. They know when these men don't have no protection on them. But they just want to lay down and have sex with black men because some of them believe that black men really care about them when the collective of black men don't. Not even their sons give a damn about them. And they continue to birth the black male. So black women who birth black men, black women who worship black men, I honestly believe they should all be like, we need to get all of them together and throw them on an island with the black males that they love, with the black males that they birth. Get the mammies, because the mammies have to go too. These disgruntled mammies, there's not, no, it's really, you can't really change their minds like that. It seems like they're on divestment, they're not. They're just being disgruntled mammies. They're just gossiping and talking about the black man because he's pumped and dumped them. Um, he don't want them. Or they're dealing with low self-esteem. or You know, different things that they've been hurt by the black male. I get it. Because a lot of you black women have, you know, was in love with black men and they did you dirty. I get it. But you're going to have to get past that place. And if you still find black males desire, desirable and you still want to sleep with them and create children with them, you are a disgruntled damn man. You just want to talk about him for attention. You want him to come back to you. You want him to leave the non-black women, leave Becky alone, come back to you and keep creating these children out of well, I creating all these bastards. That's what you're really doing. You're talking about him, dragging him. You want him to come back to you. So he can treat you all type of way. It's like the same thing over and over, a repeated cycle. You have to make up your mind. That's pretty much what I got from that interview. She had a beef with Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed be all over the place dragging her. I don't care for Tariq Nasheed, but in some ways, I believe Cynthia got exactly what she deserved. 
She talked about how Tariq now say Tariq now she said that bear winches did bear winches um had a choice in the matter of doing slavery. And so bear winches weren't the odd words, you know, like we weren't sexually assaulted um by you know white slave masters or whatnot. Um, that's what Tariq Nashi was saying, and she said that she didn't really agree with that, and that's why she fell out with Tariq Nashi. No, you really didn't. You fall out with him because he basically attacked you. He basically threw you under the bus because you're not the type of black woman that Tariq would want. Tariq wants white women or biracial women. You're not the type of woman he would want. And you did all of that advocating for Tariq Nashi, sharing his videos, um, talking about black women who deal with white men and calling us out our name, helping him coin the word bear witch. You did all of that so you got exactly what you deserve. You was out there being a mammy for Tariq Nashi, the black mammy, Sinji, and then he threw you under the bus because you're not his type. If you're not light, bright, biracial, or white, Black men like Tariq do not want you. And a lot of black men do not care for black women, dark skin, or some of them don't even care for the brown skin ones. They use the brown skin ones as pump and dump and leave them with children. The dark skin black women also. Most of the time, if you see black men married to a black woman, he's married to a light skinned black woman or a biracial black woman. I don't know if y'all don't see that. Even when it comes to my parents, my father is very dark skinned. My mother is light skinned. I see this all the time. And sometimes I will see a dark skinned black woman with a light skinned black man. But that's how it goes in the black community. So for dark skinned black women, you have options out here. Okay, you're exotic to non black men. Live your life. Stop waiting for a black man. Stop looking for a black male to accept you. Stop looking for validation for black men. Black men are basically nobodies. The collective of black men are nothing. So you're not losing out on anything. Explore your options. Don't be scared to step out in the world and to get to know people. Do not let these women and do not let these black men on YouTube, the ones that have these racist views about white men. And I'm not saying that some white people cannot be racist. We know that some can. Okay, but you got to be able to um, vet better. You got to be able to correctly, properly vet these men. I don't care what color they are. Just do not get with no bum. Vet these men. Non-black men too. Do not get with wiggers. Do not get with men that you feel have some type of racism in them. Okay? But stop listening to these black males and these black women mammies that want to make you feel like you're so disgusting because you're attracted to non-black men, because you're attracted to white men. That you want to date them and you want to be with them, you got kids with them. Stop allowing these people to make you feel less than when they are really less than you. You cannot get online and talk about the black men all day and still lay with them. That's why I called them disgruntled mammies. They should not even be in the divestment spaces. Another thing that I have a problem with disgruntled mammies and women like CG, they will use interracial couples, and I see a lot of them do this. They don't date white men, but they will use interracial couples, interracial married couples, Serena and her husband, different interracial couples, and then they'll put them in their community tab, or they'll feature them in a video. But you do not date white men. So stop using interracial couples to, to make black men jealous or mad so you can get some attention from him. Because you know a lot of the times these black males, the manosphere, they'll focus on black women that are divestors, black women that do not want them, that prefer non-black men. They're not really focused on you men. Only time they focus on you like that is when you start talking about stop birthing them. And that did not came from CG. She stole that talking point. They're using some of the divestment terminology. They weren't saying mammies and different things back in the day. But they want to talk about somebody calling somebody dusty. I've been saying dusty, crusty, ugly for a long time. For years ago, probably before YouTube. So, you know, they want to say, oh, you're taking this, you're taking that, just like they're taking our talking points. And they do listen to your videos. 
Don't think that some of these content creators don't. They listen to your videos. They see what you're talking about on your channel. They will steal your talking points. And because they have a bigger audience, people will believe that it came from them. No, it came from you because they've been sitting around listening to you. And it doesn't matter if you're a small YouTuber, you're a big YouTuber. Believe me, some of these content creators, male and female, are listening to your stuff. So they can steal your talking points and piggyback off of what you talked about in your video. Okay? They all do it. Okay? They all do it. They all do it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what she was talking about um, that I really didn't agree with. Um, I do enjoy CMG when she's dragging black men. Um, I'm not subscribed to her channel because I don't believe in her ideology when it comes to them. Um, I'm not the type to drag non-black men and drag black males but then turn around and sleep with black males. No, I'm not that type. Or turn around and try to use the white man for a wallet but the white man is unattractive and he stinks. Well, if that's the case, go and use the black male that you sleep with that you'll catch flights to sleep with for the money. And another thing I meant to say about that Q Butter dude that I don't like this Sid G dude, and that's a contradiction of her message. Black men are dusty, crusty, and ashy, except Q Butter and except Tag. Now the husband is not dusty, crusty, and ugly, which he is. But in their mind, he's some type of unicorn. He's such a good man. No, he's a Pookie and Ray Ray with numerous baby mamas and a rap sheet. That's not the type of black male that black women should be getting with. Okay? But, yo, you guys are encouraging black women to support him, encouraging black women to watch his videos. What you're doing is you're encouraging men because divestors don't be over there. We don't be over there supporting no man. We know that's a no-no. I don't care. This is divestment community is for black women. It's not for no men. Now, if non-black men want to support us, that's fine. But it's not It's not about them either. It's not about them and it's not about black males. So we will not do no such thing. We're supporting the black male, giving the black male no donation. We ain't supporting the black male school. That's another problem I got with CG. Said G do all that talking about black women, black men, but she will encourage you to donate to Q Butter School. And that should not be a school black women put their daughters nowhere in. Let him have that school for them black male sons. Do not let your daughters be indoctrinated, you know, indoctrinated with that stuff, with that uh, red, uh, what is what, red, black, and green or whatever. Do not let your daughters be, you know, brainwashed by that stuff that Q Butter and them doing in that school. See, that's a problem I got at Sid G. She wants you to take your money and she wants you to enroll your daughters in this nigga school, in this black male school, for your daughters to be brainwashed by this fucking nigga in this pro-black bullshit. See, that's when I know and that's when I feel that you're just doing nothing but clicks and views and to make money and to grow your channel, that you really don't have a desire for black women and black girls to live a good life if you're encouraging them to donate the Q butter and to enroll their black daughters and biracial daughters like Irene into this goddamn pro-black school. Basically, you want, your, want black women to enroll their daughters in that school in New York so they can worship black men and, and be uh, brainwashed with all that pro-black B1 nonsense. Nah, do not put your daughters in no Cuba to school. If these black women with these damn uh, black, black sons want to go out there and put their sons in them, let them do it. Don't let your daughters, and especially your biracial kids, anywhere near those type of shit. See, that's a whole contradiction. Donate the cute butter. Donate to his GoFundMe. Take care of black male. No thanks. You take care of him. Give him your money, CG. But to be encouraging these black women that don't want nothing to do with black men, some of them um, not dating black men anymore, and you're encouraging them to take their hard-earned money to give to some damn nigga. And who knows if the money is really going to the school. It could be going to this nigga's pocket. Just like it's going to Taz and Nala's pocket. For these donations that they're telling you to give Taz. Like, this is not what we do in divestment. That's why I truly wish 
that women that are disgruntled mammies that still want to be with black men, still want to birth their children, still want to have their sons, I wish that they would separate, stay over there with Sidji and Nala them, and stop coming in divestment spaces. See, I'm not a full, I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't care if you click or you don't click. I don't care if you unsubscribe or you don't subscribe. I don't care. I don't care if you subscribe. I prefer if you subscribe. I like people that are genuine and truly support me. Thank you for subscribing, yeah. But it's not a big thing for me. I'm not going to sell black women out for subscribers and the clicks and views. Telling black women to send their money to some damn black male in a school. We don't even know if that money truly going to building no school. It could be going to the pocket of that fucking nigga. And you just use the way to get black women out their fucking money. I don't appreciate that when that shit comes out of your mouth. You got Irene, uh, Irene, the black woman that was married to a white man that has two biracial daughters. Why in the hell would you enroll your biracial daughters anywhere near a nigga's school? Basically, what you're doing is setting your damn biracial daughters up for failure. You're encouraging them to be around black men and to sleep with them. That's what you're doing. Irene, I don't understand her either. When you are a black woman and you got biracial children, do not enroll your children in type of bullshit like that. Don't try to, you know, have your children thinking that they're black when they're really biracial. Like, come on. Those are the type of things that I don't really agree with them on. I mean, they can drag black men all day, but they don't really got no solution. They say the solution is not the birth black male. But black women are not going to believe you when you sit up and say black men are so powerful and attractive and good in the bed and you will sleep with them. Um, black women are turn around and do the same thing you're talking about, sleeping with niggas. So you do not have no solution, said G. You stole that talking point from Kendall St. Charles as far as birthing black male. Be original. Get your own talking points, you and Nala and your husband. And stop taking divestment talking points. Get your own stuff. Y'all got enough time on your hands to create that content. Leave our stuff up out of it. Create your, create your own things. And then going over there to your channel talking about somebody stealing y'all talking points. Girl, bye. If anything, y'all stole everything y'all could for the divestment and the interracial dating content created. And then you like to feature interracial couples on your channels so you can get some type of attention from black males. We're not dumb, but then turn around and say, I'm not a swirler. I, I like black men. Like, get the hell up out of here. Some of you are just as dumb and delusional as the black male. Some of you black women are just as dumb and delusional as your sons. Okay? But that's pretty much all I got to say about that video. I know I carried on a long, a long bit. I did not watch the whole thing because I pretty know what CG is all about. I remember when CG popped up on the scene, what she was talking about, what she was not talking about. I was around when she changed her viewpoint. Like a lot of these black content creators, Worship black men while calling black women that dated non-black men bad witches. Now they're on the channel dragging black men um, pretty much in every video. Every time they get to come on YouTube, they make him the focus. Black women that are truly divested, focus on yourself. Do not focus on social media. Do not focus on these mammies. And do not focus on these black males. If you do not want black men, you do not have to date them. Do not be ashamed of your preference. If you like non-black men, that is you. Do not let nobody shame you into feeling bad because you want to be with non-black men and you're not attracted to black men at all. You don't want their children. Do not let nobody shame you into having kids that you do not want. Point blank, period. And that's all I got to say. This is just my opinion. Um, people can take it however they want. Um, I'm subscribed to Storm Moreau, so I did a review on this topic. Because I wanted to. Um, this is not the go against Sid Giannala says. I'm just reporting on what I've seen throughout the years. Okay? They can talk about whatever they want to talk about on their channel. Just like everybody else. Okay? Um, black men are dragging our image all over the place. We can't do anything about that because of freedom of speech. Um, we can just pretty much counteract it by making our own videos. But do not get caught up in the social media like that. Live your life. Get out there and work on what you need to approve about yourself. Work on your mental health. Work on your health. If you need to get in shape, get in shape. You want to go back to school. You want a better job, a better education, a new career. That's what your focus needs to be on. Not this YouTube stuff. 
Okay, not putting these people on a pedestal like they some type of God. They're human beings just like everybody else. And damn, that's all I got to say. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in my next video.